Here is my review for The Legend of Korra Season 4, Episode 5, titled, Enemy at the Gate. So I'm gonna start off with Asami in this episode here. Asami goes to meet her dad in jail. She tells him to stop sending her letters. And also, she tells him that she never wants to see him ever again. But the only reason she said that is to try to actually hurt her father. Run the feels! But the thing here is, it didn't actually hurt him more so at the end of the day, he still loves his daughter. Because no matter what happens, he'll always love her. And he's very proud of her. And he even says this himself that out of all things he's ever created, she is the best thing he's ever created. And that brought a tear to her eyes. And so later in the episode, Asami goes back to the jail and she's trying to actually make up with her father. Trying to forgive him. And the first step that they take is a plain pie show. And I'm glad that she's actually taking a step to try to actually forgive him. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only parent you have left. You lost your mother. And you don't want to lose your father as well. So you should always try to spend as much time as you can with your parents. Not to mention, I will say this too, Asami shouldn't be so mad at her father because he never did anything wrong to you directly and you just didn't agree with what he was trying to do. Though disappointing, it shouldn't be as bad as you are. And one other thing I have to say when it comes to the whole Asami thing is the fact that when it comes to this episode here, it kind of feel out of place. Like really, just this came out of nowhere. I did not expect this actually. And I'm really wondering where is this going to go? Because I will say it'd be kind of odd if it was just this right here, she packs up with things with her father and that will be it. I just be like, like, I, I, it's like we didn't necessarily need this, honestly, in my opinion. All right, so let me jump into Var here. What Var was trying to do was basically um, harness the power of the spirit trunk and use its power for weapons. He saw the dangers in creating this, so he wanted that to stop. But Kavir was like, no, you will do as I say. I am the great united. Bow before me or you die. But it's interesting that Vark actually wanted to stop this project as well because it actually goes to show some character growth going on here. A conscience is actually growing inside of him. And he's thinking about the people's well-being. So that's interesting to see here. Also, let me talk about Bolin because Bolin kind of goes into Vark's thing as well. Bolin basically is being used by Kuvira to try to get the middle clan on her side. Because Kuvira thinks she can trust him. But of course, that... That, that didn't work. Also, Bolin doesn't really know what's actually going on, what Kavira is actually doing, but it comes to the places that they took over. And so when he starts seeing the light, seeing the light in his eyes, he sees that Kavira is freaking crazy. So does freaking Varag, and so they want to actually try to escape out of here. But to no avail, though, I will say Julie. <laughs> Julie was a beast in this episode. Girl was going against two mechs by herself in a mech. She was just going in. And I was sitting here like, God dang, I didn't know you were this good, Julie. Varg was a little better because they could actually escape. The funny thing is actually Julie is actually pledging allegiance to Kuvira because Julie is just done with being with Varg because you know Varg doesn't appreciate her and she feels that Kuvira might actually appreciate her abilities and her capabilities. So I'm curious to how this is actually going to turn out because as we see Varg is getting dragged away at the end of this episode. He's like no not the thing not the thing. It's clobbering time. And so when it comes to Korra in this episode it's very interesting because she's actually trying to talk to people. She's not going in their head first. Again showing the growth that she's actually had in this series, which I appreciate. And Korra thinks she can actually convince Kavira to stop trying to do what she's doing, taking over freaking places. But of course that doesn't work. Funny thing is, Kavira is so freaking cunning and so smooth with her talking, she made Korra go back to see you and it's like, hey, I actually convinced you to come to my side. I'm like, god dang, and she was about to go do it too. I was like, what? But the thing is, she's trying to do this in a more peaceful manner. That's what Korra wants to do. She doesn't want to resort to violence. And I do like the fact that she's trying to not do that. Because the old her would just been like, let's go, let's go. Wanna pillow fight something? But unfortunately, she couldn't actually talk to Suyun because Suyun has a plan to actually sneak up in there and try to ambush Kavira. And that's how the episode ends off. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to go. And the last thing is Kavira. Because I have to say this, I have to say this. When it comes to Kavira, she is just so power hungry. I mean, that's, at the end of the day, that's the essence of what's going on here. She is blinded by power and she just wants more and more and more. And it just also shows that she's pretty bad bad as a leader as well. Because it's, bas it's basically like this. Either you're with her or you're against her. If you're with her, you have to pledge allegiance and you have to abide by everything she says because if you go against her rule, you have to get thrown into a re-education program and or they might freaking produce slave labor on you. Because apparently that's what she's doing, making it like certain places actually, they have slave labor going on here. So it's really interesting that the people actually still back Kavira like this so hard. Because there are some really dedicated people on Kavira's side. But after hearing what she's been doing, it's kind of interesting why the people are really on her side like that. But she's probably doing very discreetly like so people don't really know exactly what's going on. And it's hard to say because Bolin doesn't really know anything that's been going on since she's been taking over places so. It's all very interesting. I just will say this at the end of the day. Kavira's character... Uh, 
there are parts I like of her, but at the end of the way, what she's doing, I just can't get with it. So I just, like, I don't know, I'm not really, I don't, I, I don't like it too much. It's nowhere near as interesting as what Sahir was trying to do. I can kind of, I can kind of vibe with him on a certain level, what he was trying to do when it comes to freedom and his ideology. I can't quite do that when it comes to Kavira. So I really look forward to next week's episode because I know it's going to be like an all-out battle going on here. So I'm just very curious what's going to actually happen to Bolin and Bart. Also, I'm hoping that Korra actually comes to the realization that Kavira is pretty terrible and you're probably gonna have to fight her at some point because she's just not the kind of person that you can reason with like Suyin said. Also with the amount of um, spirit trunks that they actually have too and if he guys gets done with this program this this is gonna be dangerous. This is just gonna be so freaking dangerous and just the amount of power that K Kavira is going to have. I don't think anyone's gonna stop her. Besides the Avatar! Because you know the villains can't win. So overall, this was a good episode this week. I did enjoy it. So leave a comment below and tell me what you think of this week's episode of Legend of Korra. Like it, like this review, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more Legend of Korra reviews from me. So yeah, it's been the Breakmaster, and until then, people, break out.